Hey guys, welcome to The Secret History, living inside my aquarium. So today we're going to be talking about this awesome nano fish. Uh, I would call them a micro fish. They're even smaller than nano fish. Uh, these right here, they're not chili rasboras. They are, as you probably gathered from the title, they are phoenix rasboras. And you can see they've got uh, this really beautiful electric reflective color that looks like a white or an electric sky blue every once in a while. Plus they've got these just beautiful peach colors and red colors and orange colors. And then they have a broken, they all have a big uh, round circle on their uh, side, but then they, like, they call it an eye mark or an eye spot, but they also have markings on their uh, caudal fin and on their, their body uh, as a whole, as well as sometimes on their dorsal fin. So as you see, when they're down in the water and they're just hanging out, uh, there's bits of red, there's bits of peach color. It's, it's more, less than red, it's an electric, like, neon, almost like a 1990s uh, fanny pack or roller blades color. Uh, and, you know, the, the camera really doesn't do it justice. They have the iridophores in their, uh, in their flesh, which causes that nice silvery reflection that you see that you think of when you see fish and they also have uh, just strong pigmentation that they can turn off and on uh, when they're excited so that's really cool one of the reasons why i like them actually more than any other uh of the micro rasboras uh these phoenix rasboras they go by the latin name Boraris Mera, uh, that's M-E-R-A-H if you're searching for them, because some people call them other things other than Phoenix Rasboras, uh, you know, just to sell them, basically, uh, for hype. And you can see in this tank, the largest other fish are going to be uh, three endlers, and they're all pretty small. I mean, they're, they're small, they're not guppy-sized fish and some gold ring danios. Now, my tank in this case is so densely planted that I get shoaling behavior where, you know, six to ten of them will hang out together and kind of weave loosely through uh, the water. But if this wasn't so dense, if, if there was dense plants on one part or just the back half, uh, then you would see more of schooling behavior. So if you have more than about 15, maybe a dozen, but I'd say 15 to 20 to be safe of these fish, you see this just mesmerizing and beautiful uh, you know, pattern of them swimming around all together in formation. And you'll actually see true schooling in a fish tank, which is, uh, it's, it's rare. What you're usually seeing in fish tanks is shoaling when you see tetras or uh, you know, neon tetras or something swimming together. That's a shoaling formation. Schooling is when they actually move as one mass and confuse predators that way. So where are these little beautiful fish from? Well, these little beautiful fish are from the southeast uh, part of uh, Southeast Asia. So they are from uh, countries such as Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Borneo, Thailand, and uh, a few others, probably. Uh, I say probably because we don't quite know how many species of these little guys there are. And some people have even argued that these are the same thing as a Brigitte rasbora, which would be the chili rasbora that's more uh, famous in the hobby. And they, some people would say that they're related to the exclamation point. Maybe even all of those are the same. Now, as far as I know, that's not the official opinion as of uh, the moment, but I wanted to point out while we're seeing it, you see that blue iridescent glow on that belly, and we see the dark markings, and now it's turning less red and more uh, of a translucent color, but as soon as it comes back out into the light, it will light back up in this electric fashion to signal its fellow uh, fish. And, as I said, every single fish, every single uh, Phoenix Rasbora 
they have different patterns. They'll have that eye, eye mark on the side, the big circle, and they'll have much, much more contrast than you see in, uh, in, the, in the other... I, you know, I think they should be called micro rather than nano fish because these fish are so teeny. At full-grown adult size, you can expect these fish to get no larger than an inch, and really three-fourths of an inch is more common, and half an inch is not uncommon for the males. So they stay very teeny, they have an extremely small bio load, and that's great for not having to do water changes. If you had shrimp and some of these in there, maybe a couple clown killies like these guys, uh, you could probably get away with hardly ever doing a water change once you get the chemistry set up the way you need it. Now, as for keeping these with shrimp, I'm sure people are curious. Yes, you can keep them with shrimp. Yes, they may eat some of the very, very young newborn shrimp, but due to the size of that mouth, they can't eat a whole lot more than actually like a brine shrimp sized meal. So that's definitely a plus for your shrimp colony uh, because those young, young shrimp, the ones under two or three weeks, uh, they hide and these fish are not, they're not predators in the sense that they'll go looking for the shrimp. They kind of just cruise around the middle to the top water and do their own little thing. Now, if you get uh, six of them, I would say do not get less than six of them. Uh, they won't behave well, they'll be depressed, they won't color up, they won't change colors, which is really fun. You know, that's another reason why I like these guys a lot more than the uh, chili rasboras, is you get this beautiful peach color, you get the electric pink, you get uh, that weird uh, iridescent blue belly, and awesome just different tones of fiery pink, orange, and peach colors. I've even seen kind of yellow and almost like a white, uh, like a stark white color coming up in the tips of fins and things. And when you put live food in, or um, I like feeding them this aquarium co-op fry food. Uh, I'll show you in just a sec here. Uh, there's another thing that I want to share with you about these guys in a minute. Uh, that is really handy and unique about these and a couple other fish. And so I like keeping them in any tank with nano fish. Uh, and I'd love keeping them in a big tank, but you can't let them get bullied around. These endlers actually will take food. So when you feed them, you want to make sure that the food is one very small like this for them to be able to eat because they have a jaw that does not open very wide. It, it, it is, opens from the lower part and the top part of their jaw stays stationary and they kind of gulp things with a little nip of the mouth. So you can see though that these, are, these fish are actually smaller than some of the fry from the endlers that I have right now. And they're actually smaller than a lot of the shrimp I have in this tank. Um, so having it so well planted, they really enjoy that. It makes them feel safe. It makes their colors pop because they signal one another. And all throughout the day, you'll see them go from lit up like this in the light to kind of a translucent color and back. Uh, and I think that's way more fun than the solid kind of red, maybe two tones, and then everyone has the same marking when you get an exclamation point or a uh, chili rasbora. Whereas these guys, I mean, look at, there's a difference in each fish quite a bit. And you can put them in a little five gallon tank. You can have seven or so of them with some shrimp and you're not pushing your bio load at all. I mean, one of these fish, uh, you know, or I'd say you could probably have three or four of these fish for every guppy as far as the amount of ammonia that they produce and the amount of food they eat. Now they do have quick little metabolisms, so you wanna feed them twice a day if you can. They'll, they'll be fine if you don't, they'll be fine for several days, but they really like uh, eating <laughs> and they like cruising around quickly and that's part of what's also fun about watching them is they kind of methodically roam around in little groups and they kind of move with this little flinchy 
uh, movement of the head, but for the most part, they're smooth, unlike the Rub Ruby Tetras. So let's talk real quick about uh, the sort of water conditions you're going to need. You're going to want a slow-moving water. They don't like flowing water. I mean, this right here is perfect. Uh, keep it moving a little bit, uh, or a sponge filter even is plenty, and uh, but mostly still, uh, that's what they like, especially since they hang out in the middle to the top of the tank. They love plants, so floating plants like these red root floaters or water lettuce, all these different lily species I have in here right now. They love lilies and lotus. They can hide under them. Big rocks or sticks, anything that casts a shadow is a great choice for a tank with these because it even if they don't use it and they're out in the open it gives them that option and that itself along with diet will make them all the brighter in color and i think they're far brighter than chili rasboras when they are um, excited about eating food or um, spawning and playing with one another and cruising around the tank at a quick pace. So you want to keep the water at probably about 75 to 78 degrees. That's kind of the average for the year round. However, they can take up to 84, 85 degrees for a while. That will increase their metabolism and shorten their life, but they can handle that in the wild. They go through that in the hot seasons. And uh, while they're hanging out in Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, there are several other of these uh, Borara species, these ones being Boraras mera, M-E-R-A-H, in case I missed that. Um, and <clears throat> a lot of people think that they could be actually related to the chili and Brigitte, uh, the, Brigitte is the chili rasbora, and the exclamation point rasbora. Any other rasboras that aren't true rasboras, they're these uh, micro uh, variety of cousins. Uh, you've also got the exclamation point. You've got the uh, miniature or dwarf rasboras. And uh, there's a couple other oddballs out there that aren't really in the pet trade um, that are all in this Boraras uh, category. So I hope you can see what a delight these, these fish are. I hope you pick up like 20 of them, you know, you can put them in a 20 long, basically forget they're even in there with their bio load. It's so small, like just have your normal load an inch per gallon or whatever you want to call it. And you could throw them in there. Just don't let them get steamrolled by the other fish while they're in there. The other thing is you're going to want lots of plants because it makes them comfortable. It'll make their color shine. It'll make them contrast against them. And also you'll want uh, some tannins in the water if you can help it, whether that's from plants that are uh, just kind of falling apart here and there or leaves that have been dried like catapa almond leaves. Uh, alder cones are a great choice. Uh, you can use oak leaves. You can do DIY. Now I mentioned earlier that there was something that's really cool about these fish and why I like to put either these or ruby tetras specifically in all of my nano tanks and that is because their color is so on point as far as they'll always light up this much. Uh, and these guys got here yesterday, and they're already coloring up this bright. They will get brighter. They will get so bright that it's just, I mean, it's unbelievable. You're like, is that fish glowing? <clears throat> and uh, it's because of the iridophores in them, in, in their skin. And that's where that bluish glow from their belly comes from. It's where the eye and the scale on all fish get it get their uh, um, beautiful shimmer. And it's actually a crystal in the flesh of the fish in the scale. And it is shaped like a little prism, like on a desk, like the Pink Floyd logo. And it really shows off some of that that light that hits it it scatters it so you'll get this beautiful rainbow effect of light every so often and then that white blue light off their belly too which is interesting because they're being lit from above yet they have enough clarity that it can still shine through and get their belly they can also do this little skip that this guy did sideways they can kind of hop sideways through the water so that's another fun thing to watch but really i, I recommend getting 
at least a dozen of these, no less than six. They'll just be depressed and hide in a corner. They won't move. They'll have a hard time eating, and they won't have any confidence. So they won't even come out uh, to get the food, and they may very likely pass away. Now, keeping them with shrimp, they may eat a couple baby shrimp, but I've never personally seen it. I've seen them eat plenty of copepods and seed shrimp, but look at these guys. I mean, they're not even an inch long. This guy is full grown, and he's half an inch long. This, these are some of the five smallest fish you actually can get in the hobby. So they're a really cool addition that doesn't add much bio load. If you're thinking, man, I really want some uh, energy, excitement, some interesting behavior, but I, my fish tank's already pretty full. Uh, as long as you don't have any aggressive fish that are going to eat a half inch long fish, these guys are an awesome choice to just kind of give some new life to your aquarium. And uh, the other thing is they are a barometer. This is the cool thing I was going to tell you about. They are 100% a barometer. So you know how bright they are once you have them for a while. When you feed them food with omega-3s and also iodine, organic forms of iodine, that keeps them really bright uh, in the bright oranges and the peaches and the reds. That's where that comes from uh, biologically. And it also keeps the guarine and guanine crystals that cause that sparkle on them the iridophores, as they're known, uh, different than pigment cells. Now, here is a younger one. This one's only probably a quarter inch back here. But, again, all have different markings. They're all shoaling in here, even though uh, there's only about six in that little group. But if you get a more open tank, always give them some spot to hide and get cover again, or some lilies, some floating plants, and they're gonna they're gonna have the the courage and the confidence as long as there's no fish picking on them uh, to come out and to actually school and that is a rare treat in this hobby especially to say that you could have a 20 gallon and you could get you know 40 of these guys and have them schooling just beautifully in your tank uh, and I just think that's really cool so. Several reasons why I think they're better than the Chili Rasbora. You can get them at Aquatic Arts, and right now, uh, I guess it depends on when you're watching this video, you can get them at 15% uh, off, plus they were on sale, and uh, you can buy a group of them. Don't buy three at a time. Buy, buy six or 12, you know, um, and give them the life they're accustomed to. Throw some tannin in, in there, you know, some alder cones, uh, some, some leaves. Keep the temperature right around 78. They, they'll take up to the 84, 85 point, uh, and they'll take all the way down to 68. But really, they want those mid to upper 70s. That's what they're accustomed to, living right on the equator. And, uh, you know, make sure that they're not getting, uh, not necessarily, they're pretty quick, so they usually don't get picked on by other fish. Uh, they'll e either get straight eaten by like an angelfish or something, uh, or they will get uh, consumed, you know, uh, or their food will get consumed, I should say. Uh, the angelfish will consume them. But the other fish that are small like this can sometimes just snag their food. So make sure to watch and make sure they're getting their food. And if their color is light, the cool, cool thing is you know there's a water problem before any other fish start showing problems, before anybody's sick. These guys and ruby tetras, in my experience, I put them in all the nano tanks because they give you the heads up that something is off. And, uh, you know, they can take a pH all the way down to 4, and they like to breed at a pH of 6 or under. And to get them to breed, they're just egg scatterers. So I'd get rid of all the other species in the tank. Uh, I mean, I suppose you could stick with some of the, the shrimp still. The shrimp may eat the eggs. And then uh, you just let them be. What you could do is you could put 20 adults in a really well-planted tank and try to catch them all out, maybe set a bottle trap, uh, something like that and then just wait a week and see what you get uh, hatching. But they're definitely going to need infusoria, really teeny little bits of food when you breed them. And every once in a while, if you've got a seasoned old tank like I do now, 
uh, over a year old with lots of little critters in the water column, they will just sometimes uh, magically, you usually don't see them until they're adults, but sometimes you'll just notice, hey, I've got a couple more. So really cool fish. Uh, you can check them out, like I said, at aquaticarts.com. Hopefully your local store can order them or have them. They're Boraris Mara or Phoenix Rasbora, like the country, or <laughs> not the country, like the city. And, uh, you know, I highly advise them. All right, guys. Uh, last thing I wanted to say is that uh, I will be doing more species profiles and... Uh, I really wanted to thank y'all for subscribing, for watching, for hitting that thumbs up when you like a video. That shrimp almost jumped straight out of the tank, very odd. Uh, and, you know, let me know what type of nano fish, no, let alone, let me know what kind of micro fish you like, because uh, I think these, even though it's recommended for a five gallon, uh, they, they should have some room to move and everything. But I do think you could keep five or six of these in a uh, five, uh, in a three gallon, absolutely no problem with some shrimp and with like an auto synclus or something or some of these rocket killies, uh, especially if it's well planted. All right, guys, that's what I have to say. I know that was a, a wordy rundown, but I'm a wordy guy. And thank you for watching. If you feel I've earned it, you can always support the channel also through Patreon, or share your own pictures of your critters on the Facebook. All the links are down below, including the discounts at Aquatic Arts. Take care of yourself and the critters around you, including people, and I will talk to you next time. Swim on. Bye.